Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we have another experiment for you guys and that is playing around with hinges, rotors, and pistons. Alright, so we are back with an experiment and this one's been on my mind for quite some time. And it's exactly what you're kind of seeing right in front of us and can we put rotor hinges and pistons head to head <laughs> for whatever reasons yes we can as you see here was it difficult to do eh, kind of but not really but initially yeah this was kind of experiment to see if we were able to put the rotor heads together and spin it the hinges and hinges i think that was the easiest one and then pistons to piston head which is the roughest one and what uses can we get out of this honestly it, in terms of the experiment to see if it works, um, it does, but what can we use it for? That could be a different story. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think for the most part, it is going to be more for de design purposes. Obviously, um, something like this, where both rotor heads are stuck together and is rotating together at the same time, it just creates a different type of look right here. I mean, otherwise, if you had the rotors kind of spin the same direction, I think right now it's opposite direction. Yeah, if you spin them the same direction, you get this kind of effect, which is kind of doubling the speed of this rotor to this rotor. Obviously, I mean, it's the same, almost or nearly the same as adding your rotors kind of together um, from bottom to head also. So it's kind of the same aspect in that case. Um, to kind of double the speed, but it just gives a different look to it and it is possible to do and I'll explain how to do that in a second if you're very interested in that. The next piece was hinges. Um, hinges um, forward and backward it technically kind of look the same. Um, there's no real difference in design really when it comes to putting hinges either like this or head to head as we have it here. I mean this is minor difference in look but I don't think it's anything significant in terms of kind of moving it around. Not the same as the rotors, but if we move it around. I mean, it's still going to move around kind of the same way as a regular hinge. So nothing too significant here in this case. So that works okay. And it's pretty much clang inducing in that sense. And the last piece that we have here is going to be the pistons piston on piston head is there a use for this absolutely not really <laughs> um, but it does create some kind of cool looking design so they both kind of extend the same way actually so they're all going to go positive right so if we go positive this way that one extends if we go positive in this one that one extends but again it's more for an aesthetic look i think because this here i guess if you were to make it something like this you have less of the base right here down the middle and you can make something out of it. Maybe. Potentially. I don't know. Um, it's just a random design that we're just taking a look at. See how that kind of works. Alright, so now the experiment was to kind of see if it worked. And it does. But how I did it, that's a little bit on the tougher side. So basically with the rotor on rotor. It's a little bit more difficult to do than, your, than the hinges. Um, I think the hinges is probably the easiest one to do. But in terms of the rotor version, so you need to stick a rotor here and then you need to stick a rotor head here, whether it's the advanced rotor or a regular rotor, that works fine. But then here is where it gets tricky and what we actually did was use pistons. The pistons really helped kind of combine this piece here. So what we, what we do is put a piston there, we put a rotor head here, whether we can use the advanced rotor as well, same thing, right? And then stick it onto that if we can. But in this case, let's just go with a regular rotor since that's the same. Remove the head and then we will reverse the piston here like so. And then we can easily go into the system, grab the rotor that we look, we're looking for. And it's this one that's detached. And now we can attach it right there. And it kind of glitched a little bit, but that's fine. But that's how you attach head to head like I did here with the large grid. So completely possible, fairly easy to do with a piston and detaching and everything like that. Um, if, if you prefer, 
to have the mod available to yourselves if you subscribe to it or have it which is build vision you can always go to the build vision menu and hit attach when it gets close and we're, that is necessary for the piston version um, other than that the hinge one is one of the easiest ones to do which is basically throw out a hinge right here and then you could easily just put in a block right there right next to it and first we put a hinge down onto the block like so get rid of this piston this piston has hinge head or hinge part and add the hinge part right there and same thing go to menu or build vision hit attach and get rid of this, the thing there the platform there so now that's head to head basically so that's the easiest one to do and that's the easiest one to do for many things if you want to connect hinges to hinges similar to to my mobile drilling rig that i've created recently um that is easily just put in the hinge get rid of the hinge part and add the hinge part separately onto the next grid and then attach it the most easiest thing in the world now the piston one piston one is a different story because if you go into the controls, there is no attach piston head. You can add a piston head, reverse it, or, or whatever. You can't even detach it. So this one was a little bit more difficult to do. But you definitely need build vision in order to do this. So build vision option actually gives you detach and attach. So that's what I kind of did there. So basically, and it's going to be a little bit hard to kind of mimic, but here's your piston. Here's your piston head. And we need it to have, and I'm going to use this to kind of calculate where we are, since we already have it. So we need the piston to kind of stretch out almost fully to kind of get to that point well, where we need it to be. So let's just say for an example, I think this is probably it. So we need the piston right here. And we'll just get rid of the piston head. And we'll go here and reverse it and stretch it out all the way possible. Once it hits the all the way possible, that's when we can sometimes <laughs> attach it. Not always. Uh, for the most part, I would say yes. But you'll see that when we get close to it, to the piston head. And I keep hitting attach. Let's just hope it does. And guess what? It didn't allow me to do it this time. <laughs> so that's what I mean by sometimes. Sometimes it allows it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it kind of gets a little tricky for some reason. Maybe we need shared inertia. Sometimes that might help a little bit. Not really. But it's not attaching anymore. So this is what I mean by it's a little bit more on the difficult side to do. Um, I think sometimes it really depends on the rotation of the piston that we're trying to attach. I, I believe. So I'm reverse it and try to attach it again. And it's not working. So hit add piston head. Let's see if I can reverse it. Add the piston head. Detach it. Reverse it. And then attach it again. See if that works. And that doesn't seem to work. Okay. So maybe it is true. The, um, the rotation of it needs to be different from what it is currently. That's the same. So with the control panel down pointing down. It should point opposite direction, I think. Like, that's <laughs> kind of sounds about right from what I did previously. So let's just reverse this. And see if it attaches. I got it to work previously. Um, I promise, I see, well, you can actually see it. But this is the way I did it. There's no other way that I can think of to kind of get this attached either. So let's hope for the best here. And... Hmm. And it's not actually working out here. <laughs> so, not good. Okay. So, so another option is to get it closer or further back. Let's just try closer really quick. Or maybe we try a different rotation at the same time. Actually, that, that, that doesn't even work out, actually. Um, let's just give it a shot and see what happens. But yeah, like I said, it's a kind of hit or miss kind of situation. Not sure why. Um, it took me a while to get it to work, and when I got it to work, it was kind of clang inducing for a second until it stopped um, shaking. But let's see if we can get close to it and hit. Nope, that's not working 
out as I thought it would. So the other option is to, I guess, increase the maximum or decrease the maximum to a certain point where it's just touching the piston head over there. So I think that's about it, right? Yeah, it's kind of touching it. So let's see if this, this works. Oop. There we go. So if you played around, so for whatever reason, if I played around with the maximum to get it to a certain point, it's going to attach. So right now it's attached. So if I remove that, there we go. It actually flipped it over, as you saw there. So that's pretty much how you attach it. I guess you have to line it up with the lines here. Potentially, that's kind of a thought. But that's how that works, basically. Like I said, it's kind of hit or miss, but I think if you line it up just right, hit attach with the build vision option, it's going to work perfectly fine. So, like I said, this is just playing around with a little bit of hinges, pistons, and rotors, and having them head to head, see if this is even possible. But of course, I didn't want to stop there. And of course, we had to play around with a few more things as well. So one of the things I want to play around with is large grid to small grid, which is a combination of conversion I've done not too often, but once in a while, when I want to make something that's large grid with small grid items, my necessary go-to is a rotor with a small head. Why? Because that is something by default you can already do. So basically put a rotor down, get rid of the head, detach it or whatever the case is, and you can add a small head. So that's the easiest way to do it. And then you can add a small blocks or small items for whatever reasons you want. Projectors, um, smaller weapons, things like that is possible. So the rotor by default is the simplest way of doing it. And it's just in, de in the default options. Now, when it comes to the hinge, that's a bit of a different story. So with the hinge, um, you do have a small part conversion as well. So basically, you put a hinge here, got rid of this the hinge head, you can add a small head, but the small head's the 3x3 three three small head, as you see here. So that's the other option, by default. But if you didn't want a big piece like that, and you want to get the small hinge part, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky. And you can see here, if I reverse this, it moves <laughs> and if we connect a connecting piece there like a cargo or conveyor junctions that kind of flows through from the small part and through the back side uh, which you can collect items that way and i've used this pretty much at one point for weapons um so we did like a hinge weapon we can attach that a gatlin here or many gatlins and you can kind of hide it um, pretty well um, in this case so how did I do, do this? Well, many ways to do it. Uh, one of the trickiest ways or one of the ways I've done it is basically put the hinge there, of course, get rid of the head. And actually, I just use a rotor system. Um, so then a rotor system, we just put a small head here, throw in some small blocks or blocks, right? And we throw in very close to where we think it belongs for the head or the hinge head or head part in this case. So here's the small one. Throw it right there. Then you can go in the controls or your build vision. If anything, hit attach. And it should take it from there, usually. <laughs> so right now, yeah, I did have it attached. Yeah, there you go. So that's attached. So we can get rid of this Oop. or not. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Here's your hinge. We get hit attach. Now we're attached and we get rid of this. And as you see here, that's attached. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, one of the greatest tips that many of you shared with me as well. And basically is putting a timer block. Whether it's a timing block on a small grid or a large grid, whatever the case is. Right here, we put in the timing block. And then what we pretty much do is... Tell the timing block to trigger itself immediately. So take the timer block, trigger now, and then set up the action. So this, in this case, it's going to be the hinge and it's going to say attach. So when we start this, it's an infinite loop of it going attach, 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 attach. 
So if we got rid of these things here and we decide to do the same thing like so, it should automatically attach it just like that, as you see here. So that's a nifty trick if you don't know how to get it to work. And if, or maybe if you just maybe able to just throw a hinge part right into it and hope it attaches, that's also a possibility. I actually never tried it, so let's let's see if it works. So we go to the timer block. Let's just say trigger now. And it should be repeating on a loop. And if we were to throw in a small hinge part, let's see if it works. Here's a small one. And if we just kind of fit it right in there and drop it, is it going to work? There we go. See, that works just well too. <laughs> So that's why this timer block is pretty nifty. So yeah, so that was a cool little teaching moment from you guys in the comments. So one thing I've never tried, and interesting enough, you can do a large piston with a small piston. And items are transferable. So here we have a small car container, which is this little piece right here, with some iron, right? And if we go to the back side here for the car container, we could actually transfer the iron from the from the front to the back. But it kind of <laughs> acts a little odd. So here you see the little piston head is in there with some cargo um, conveyor junctions and a cargo container there. So the head itself is kind of hidden. And it's kind of hard to see, but right there, if you kind of glitch right into it, there's a small piston head. And it's attached to the conveyor junctions and the car container. So what can you do with this? Honestly, maybe put some Gatlins, different small um, grid weapons, or some other things. Potentially. I'm not too sure. But I didn't think this would work. But it, for some reason, it did. Um, unfortunately, you can't timer block loop this to get it to work. So you're going to have to do the same exact thing. And basically, if you do the timer block loop we should have a attach function here which we don't so this was done kind of the same way as the piston head to piston head but we used a a, a small piston head attached to this rotor here so we just pretty much added some blocks here and some blocks all the way down here to the front of it um, and i had the piston move back a little bit reverse so we can Add some more blocks up to right around here. And that's where I put the, the piston head. Because that's where it attaches. You, you can't attach it right in front here. Because the small piston head wouldn't attach there. So it has to be somewhat inside it. Um, right in there. So that's how I uh, kind of attach that piece to the <laughs> to the piston. Um, once again, I've never tried it. This was the first time I tried it. And it actually looks pretty interesting. And we can definitely design it throughout as well so I was playing around with a design like this um, and like I said we can add some more stuff to it to add some weapons um, there's probably some use to it another strange thing I did was to add a bunch of <laughs> small um, pistons here for whatever reasons uh, not really any use but it's possibility as well looks kind of funky in some ways and we could just do like a whole bunch of reversals in here, like so. Alright, so one last thing before we go. And of course, that is going to be small grid to large grid. So that is something I've played around with once in a while when I have a small rover to attach a large ore detector. Um, there's several options. So you can obviously, in as you see here, do a advanced rotor large grid head attached to a small rotor right down here and of course this does the same thing as that piston style where it hides the rotor and of course this is working so if i were to move the rotor and spin it so as you see here I hit the velocity a little high rpm or higher rpm and it's spinning perfectly fine no issues and if you were to have an advanced rotor the small one and the head you can transfer items this way too so again, this is a good way to attach large grid items into a small grid rover or a ship. 
not really ideal because the weight of the items for large grid versus a small grid is pretty significant. So <laughs> it might be a little hard to drag things along, but I've done it mainly with the ore detector and it works per perfectly fine. Um, not the perfect placement I wanted, but just to show you that that kind of works. Another option was a hinge, a large grid hinge head onto a hinge um, or a small grid hinge. That doesn't seem to be working today, and I'm pretty sure I can get it to work eventually, but right now it's kind of in a stuck state here where it's just freaking out a little bit and not really cooperating, and it's not co cooperating because it's going outwards <laughs> over here for whatever reasons, but I can promise you it is attached because if it hit detached, it's going to fall right off. So I couldn't get that to work, unfortunately, but I mean, I think if we, I think it's a possibility, although it might not be the best idea because it's such a large item and it might cause some, a bit of clank. Um, so I would be careful of that one. And of course, the last piece is the piston <laughs> on a, a small piston on a large grid head or a piston head. So you see here, it kind of glitches out because this is a small piston right here. But the head does the opposite um, from its opposite companion or or item there. Where we had the large grid on a small grid head where it kind of sinks into it. Now we have a small grid with a large head when it now it shows a bit of a gap and not sink into it. So it's a little bit odd. But it is working in terms of transferring items once again. So there's a small cargo container right here. And I can throw in the ore here. Of course, large grid items will probably not transfer out correctly. Um, I could be wrong. So that's interesting that it's doing that. Maybe because I'm in creative mode. But this is actually working perfectly fine as well. So if we want to reverse the piston, we have to reverse though. And if you have items that are way, way too heavy to put on here, um, we probably need to increase the torque and everything like that if, you, if this thing's not going to move. So I think sheer inertia is on, but if I reversed it, as you see here, it is working perfectly fine without any issues. So how did I put that together? Kind of the same thing as everything else. Um, using blocks, large grid blocks, and then putting the piston head in its, in its face. And at some points, I've used the timer block trick to get it to lock in as quickly as possible. But now we know, <laughs> and we had some fun with the rotor hinges and pistons to see if you can do head to head, large grid to small grid head, and small grid to large grid heads. And everything works out fine and hope you guys can take that tip as well. Share it with others if they're having trouble locking these in. Use the timer block trick because that works out pretty well. And the last thing again, Basically, if you are trying to do this with the pistons, you have to have build vision because that's the only way to get the attached um, option for pistons. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed that bit of an experiment to have some fun with these three different items and try some new things with it to maybe get some new design ideas or play around with it as well. Um, but if you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up, like the video, drop a few comments down below, and of course, Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.